I like planes. I love their style, the, the almost retro feel of the old dogfighters relying on instinct and skill and not electronic instruments to fight and take down your foes. You know what else I like? Mizushima Tsutomu as a director. He directed not only some of my favorite slice of life comedies, like Squid Girl and Girls in Panzer, which by the by, going from tanks to planes raises my hype level significantly. But he also directed Shiro Bako, my favorite anime of 2015, one of my favorite anime of all time, and in it, they make an anime about a group of girls who fly around in planes just like this. Could my hype get any hype? Probably, but I'm glad it didn't. Because you know what they say, the bigger the hype, Harder the disappointment. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, shit. With that intro, you're gonna think that I don't like this show. And I do, I do enjoy it. It's just that it has, it has problems. All right, we'll get into those. Okay, continue the intro. This video was brought to you by Eleven Arts, the film Penguin Highway, and of course, Viewers like you. Thank you. The magnificent Kotobunki. To start, because I feel like I need to clarify something, because otherwise, like, people might take my opinion on the show in the wrong direction, there can be such a thing as a show that is not brilliant, but also not trash. A series that is more of a disappointment rather than just being plain bad. The Magnificent Kotobunki is not a bad show. It's actually been a rather enjoyable show, but I'm unfortunately finding it much easier to come up with disappointments instead of positive notes. Kotobunki is a series about a squadron of mercenary air pilot dogfighters taking on jobs and doing a crap ton of flying and fighting. It's half awesome dogfighting, half slice of life with the main characters, which is both good and bad. And I just listed both of those as things that I enjoy. Believe you me, as someone who goes out of my way to watch Slice of Life shows, this one hurts. And it's due to it a number of reasons. The cast itself is quite large. The squadron contains six pilots, plus there's also Madame Lulu who owns and operates the corpse, the commanding officer of the Zeppelin that the squadron uses as a home base, the mechanic who takes care of their planes, and the various other crewmates and officers who are required for the group to do what they do. The show, as of yet, and this could still change, has been taking its time in really trying to flesh any of these characters out. Some, like the commander, don't need it. We don't need more past his introduction scenes to really know what he's on about. But even just focusing on the squadron, after three episodes, I could only say that I confidently knew enough about maybe three of them, and now after nine episodes, I still don't feel like I know enough about them. I assumed that we would eventually get a better glimpse of most of the cast beyond one-liners or comedic bits or out of nowhere fan service. For a long time, I expected that we would just learn more about them as time went on, but that seems to be less and less the case as the series progresses. For me, when you have a series like this one that wants to lean heavily on its cast for their enjoyable interactions, I need to have a reason to care. I need to know what their story is. Like, why, why are they flying? Are they flying for someone, because of someone, or do they just simply love flying? I know some of these answers, but too often I get the feeling that certain characters were created solely just to fill out the squad. They are given spotlight in such a way to make it look like they're supposed to be main characters, but they barely have enough development to qualify as secondary characters. <sighs> okay, but enough about complaints for the moment. Let's get to some good stuff. Because the real highlight of this series, even if it's a bit make or break it for most viewers, will of course be the dogfighting. Most of the dogfighting scenes with planes fighting planes tend to take up a full quarter of every episode thus far. So, if you don't enjoy this, then you probably won't appreciate the series as a whole. There is a lot to like though, the planes really do make use of the 3D animation in a positive way. The soundtrack flares when it needs to, but it also stops at just the right places to make the ambient noise of both the engines and the gunfire do the heavy lifting for extra excitement. The only major issue I have with the dogfighting is that I kind of wish that there was a way to better distinguish the aircrafts in the fights themselves. When the majority of planes aren't 
painted fully. Everything just kind of looks like a flying metal box, and that occasionally makes it difficult to distinguish which plane is for which side, especially when the plane models are similar enough. Now, eventually, you will come to recognize the shape of the Kotobunki planes, but it's not initially obvious from the get-go. There is, of course, sadly, one other negative. <sighs> Why are there so many negatives that I have to talk about? So, here's my problem, my absolute problem with the series. And that is it has a general disregard for animation consistency. So, to be clear, this is not me bashing the show on its use of 3D animation, at least not specifically. Rather, I have a problem with the show's use of both it and 2D animation in conjunction with one another. Because you see, when I watch the PV for this show and all of the other promotional material, I assume that this show would be entirely in 3D, which would have been fine. Like you can have issues with 3D animation, but still have an enjoyable series. See Kimono Friends. And I thought that the production staff knew what it was doing. Don't think that that was a good assumption. If the 3D was bad, then I could at least just register that in my brain and start to ignore it over time. But that's not the issue with the show. First, there are scenes that are animated in 2D. I don't know what the criteria were for them to, to like choose which scenes were done in what way, but decisions were made. That, however, is not the worst of it. The worst is when you have both 2D and 3D in the same scene. When your environment is rendered in 3D, your main characters are in 3D, and then there are some 2D characters, they stick out like a sore thumb. Plus, you never know at the start of a new scene what new 2D thing will suddenly decide to reveal itself. I kept finding it increasingly difficult to focus on the story, when instead my mind is distracted by, oh, they decided to swap animation styles here. But why? Keep it freaking consistent. Just have some kind of uniform standard on a scene by scene basis. That's all I want. That's all I want. But hey, they did all the fan service in 2D. Priorities, am I right? Sure, I suppose it could be something that you come to ignore as the series goes on. And I will admit that that slowly did start to become the case a bit but I still find it hard to recommend the show when all of these problems just boil down to, you'll get used to it, I promise. This really is a shame because I do enjoy other aspects of this show. However, I can't not mention these things, and I wish I didn't have to. I do enjoy this show as a nice, fun and fancy free slice of life with a little bit of action into it that just makes it enjoyable to watch. I just can't in good conscience not mention the other shit, so maybe it'll get better. Because then again, this is just my first reaction to the series. With a little luck, it could turn out <laughs> quite a bit different from what I'm expecting. Thank you for joining me on this quick discussion of the magnificent Kondobunki. There will, of course, be streaming links down in the description should you require them. But also like to give a very, very special thank you to Eleven Arts for sponsoring this video in preparation for the theatrical release of the anime film Penguin Highway. Penguin Highway is an absolutely beautiful film that will be making its way to US theaters next month, and I will be putting some links in the description so that you could potentially find a showing near you. This is a film you are going to want to see on the big screen. Trust me on this. And of course, let me know down in the comments what you have been following this season. I realize that there's not much left of this season, and I probably won't be covering any other show on an individual basis, but, you know, maybe I'll get to talking about some of them in some kind of video in the future. Wow. So let me know about that. And lastly, a big thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. You all are amazing. And until next time, Ladies, gentlemen, and others, watch more anime, and stay frosty.